What is going on guys, Pat on the shop, and tonight we're talking about piston rings, piston ring gap, what's the deal, let's check. So I've been working away trying to get our uh, engines together, we got the YouTube engine, the, the orange over there, one piece rear main, we got this uh, black two piece rear main seal, um, and we got another engine that I'm actually putting together that I'm going to talk about in another video, so you guys are going to be excited about that, uh, because hint hint, it is a Vortec engine. So. Vortec headed engine. Um, so I wanted to make a video about piston rings and piston ring gap. Just a quick video. I'm not gonna. We could get into real detail about different types of piston rings and different types. But I'm just gonna talk generally about just your regular standard uh, piston ring set that you guys would be using for your you know hot rod engine at home, and and what ring gaps you're gonna use with a hyper piston. So let's talk about that for a second. So piston rings play a very important role in engines. Uh, they deal with performance, oil control, and just general longevity of an engine. Uh, so basically what a piston ring gap is, and I'm sure most of you guys are familiar, but we're just gonna go over this, is the amount of gap in between the ends of the piston ring when installed in the bore. Why this is so important, um, too big of gap, allows for a lot of blow by. You'll never see a gap that big uh, unless there's something really wrong, but too big of a gap, uh, you'll get lots of blow by past, past the piston. Um, and too tight a gap is, is also not good at all. Uh, in a perfect world, we could get into uh, gapless rings and stuff like that, but we're not gonna talk about that. Gapless rings are expensive and they're not in a lot of guys' budget. Um, but gapped rings like this work just fine. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit and about how much we're gonna gap these. But first let's talk about what happens if we don't have enough gap. So here's a, a piston right here. Uh, this is a Hyper Piston 383. And I'm gonna show you what can happen if you don't have enough piston ring gap. You see that big chunk of, of piston mis removing, <laughs> removed from the side here? This is what happens when the ring end gaps butt up against each other. So what will happen is the heat of the piston uh, and the heat of inside the combustion chamber will work its way into the piston ring and everything expands every, when just like anything when heat and gets into metal everything expands. So the piston ring end gap will get tighter and tighter to the point where it touches and when it touches they'll actually butt up and then move kind of in an up or down direction depending and that's when it starts snapping the ring lands like that. Uh, when you start getting into nitrous, uh, boosted engines, the more power you're making, the more heat you're generating. The more heat you're generating, the more ring gap you need because this, this uh, space will get tighter with heat. All right, so to check ring gap, we're gonna simply push the ring so you're gonna start with the one side in, you're gonna push it in with your thumb just to the very top. And then some guys have um, a fancy squaring tool to push it down into the bore because you gotta make sure the ring is actually square in the bore. Uh, what I use is a piston, an old 30 over piston, so this is bore 30 over, uh, 30 over piston with the oil ring still on there. And this is actually that this is that crack piston that I showed you that I've cleaned up so there's no debris or anything. Just make sure it's clean. And then I use it, I just push it down until it hits the oil rings. This is what I always use. It's kind of a reminder of why ring gap is important as I'm checking ring gap. So it's kind of a little bit ironic. But, um, and then you can see here, right here is our ring gap. So uh, what you want to take is your feeler blade set. Everyone's got to have a good feeler blade set in their toolbox. And um, roughly, the idea, the old rule of thumb is uh, uh, four thousandths of inch of ring gap times the bore. So this is a 4.03 bore, so you know 16 to 18 thousandths of ring gap. Um, but that's not what we're, we're going to end up with here. But you can start with that. So this is this is a 20 thou feeler blade. I'm actually going to go. I'll go smaller to show you first. So here's 16, this would be the tightest you'd want it. And as you can see, it's loose in there. You can go this way, that's the way I do it normally, but I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera here. So I'm gonna do it like this, just for camera's sake. Uh, so that is too loose. So you just work your way up. I'm gonna show you here, this is actually, uh, this is actually 20. 
So see how it's staying in there just nice? Um, that, that gap is 20,000. So that's what I was aiming for. Uh, and that's what you want. And that's what you'll want to get. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second for you're going to figure out for your specific application, how much ring gap you want for this one. We're going to go 20 thou on the top, but it's simple as that. And then you can do the same thing, uh, with the second ring. Always make sure to, to keep your rings organized so you're not mixing up. So it's, this is the second ring and you're going to do the same thing. Put it in, square it up and check it again. We'll go ahead and show you how to file a piston ring. Uh, this is just a scrap ring, but we're gonna pretend like we've put this in the bore. We've determined that it is too tight of a ring gap, so we're gonna have to grind it a little bit. Uh, so you wanna get yourself just a real basic ring gr grinder like this. These work great, I use this all the time. Uh, you know, there's fancier ones out there, elect electric ones, this and that, but honestly, for most guys, these work just fine. Uh, real old school. So you want to get the ring in here. These are tapered. You're going to push it up against and you're going to be really careful not to damage the ring, but you're going to, you're going to squeeze it a little bit against the stone here, just a little bit of pressure. And this is going to be something that you're going to be on and off here and you're going to take time to get used to. So you're going to do that, push it up against here, get those nice, you got to keep everything nice and square to the, to the, uh, to the stone here. And then you're going to spin this counterclockwise. And you're going to do a few turns and then you're going to recheck this in the bore. Uh, and then you're going to kind of get a feel. I always suggest counting the turns. So when you're doing it, one, two, three, four, five. And depending on how much it is, maybe do three turns and kind of get an idea how much you're taking off. Because you can, you, you can take more off. It's really hard to put more back on. So uh, just do a little bit at a time. And then when you're all done, uh, you're gonna notice, this is after you've put it back in the board, made sure that everything is fine. And I always recommend wiping them off after, uh, you know, every time you check it, but you're gonna notice there's a little bit of a lip here. So that's something you wanna get a file and take care of. Another thing I want to note is to remember the top ring is often different material than the second ring. So you'll find the top ring will take more turns to file down than the second ring. So if you're doing the top rings first, don't get used to how many turns it takes when you're doing the second because you'll find that you're going to take material off a lot faster. So how much ring gap do you really need? Well, there's a few th different things you got to, to you know, figure out. Uh, so first you obviously got to know your bore size because everything is going to be calculated off your bore size. The bigger the bore, the more ring gap it's gonna, the number is going to be. Um, the second thing you got to know is what piston material you're using. So these are hyper eutectic pistons, both of these. Uh, and the, the other thing is how much power is this thing going to make? Oftentimes you'll see things that say like, like example for the, on this chart right here, it'll say street, it'll say street strip, circle track, force induction, uh, force induction over 15 pounds of boost and then nitrous. And that really is just, um, it's basically just saying how much power is this engine going to make? Cause like I said before, more power equals more heat. And then when it comes to circle track racing, again, making power long extended periods of time when you're on, on the engine for you're you're soaking a lot of heat into that for a long period of time, you're going to need more ring gap. So I just want to show you this real quick as well. Uh, take a look at these two pistons. See how this ring land is moved closer to the top than this one? See the, the space here versus here? This is also super important to remember because that will also affect your ring gap. So make sure you check with your manufacturer. I know like Keith Black pistons and stuff, they have a really high um, ring gap. Uh, it's a six and a half thou. Per, per inch of bores. So I know someone's gonna ask me, so I'll just let you know, on a piston like this is a Speed Pro, uh, it's just a um, regular piston, it's not moved up, the ring line's not moved up like this one, so this is just a regular piston. Uh, I don't go by the old four thou per inch, I, I, that's not what I go by. So here's, here's generally what I follow, unless indicated by the manufacturer to go larger. Uh, the top ring on this, I'll go, between four and a half to five thou per, per uh, inch of bore. So I was aiming for 20 thou on the top ring. And on the second ring, actually, 
I always shoot for more than than the top ring. Um, it's kind of a, an old school thing where the second ring is tighter. Even on this Hastings sheet here, it shows to put the second ring tighter. Uh, but on the second ring, I shoot for five to five and a half thou. So I was actually shooting for 22 thou on this. So I usually, whatever the top ring is, I'll go two thou bigger on the, on the second ring typically. Um, so the reason being is what happens is whatever gas gets past the first ring if the second ring is too tight it will get like it'll get stuck in between causing like a high pressure and it will cause the piston ring to flutter so by opening up that second gap a little bit you'll actually get better performance because the the you can actually relieve that gas pressure in between the two rings and not get that ring flutter uh, and lose your ring seal so that's why they do that um, it's been proven time and time again by you know, uh, the, the big boys, the big engine manufacturers, and it actually works quite well. So uh, just to recap, on this piston right here, on this um, 30 over small block Chevy, I was shooting for 20 on the top and uh, 22 on the second. And then the oil, the oil um, rails and stuff, you just wanna make sure you have a minimum of 15 thou clearance on those. Here's another thing to make a good note of, and I'm doing like an exaggerated drawing here uh, for guys that are re-ringing an old bore that you may, maybe they're just doing a hone or um, uh, you know just doing a re-ring job. So we're, we're going to talk about bore taper. So this is the cylinder bore. I'm sorry, I'm not an artist. Uh, this is the piston in here. Um, here's your ring lens. So the top of the bore is always going to be worn more in almost all cases. So we're going to say the top of the bore is 4.032 inches and the bottom of the bore is uh, 4.030 inches. Um, if you set the ring gap at the top uh, when you check it on, on a, an old bore um, and you set it to say 20,000, you use like a file fit ring that's oversized and you, and you file it down to 20,000. As the ring travels down, and this, this bore is tapered to thou, the ring gap down here is only gonna be 14 thou. Because for every inch change in bore diameter, the ring gap is gonna shrink three thou. So you're gonna have a six thousandths of an inch ring gap from the top to the bottom with only a two thou taper on the bore. So that's super, something that's super important to remember if you're doing a re-ring. And if you have, you know, you're starting to get a lot of taper in the bore, it's probably time for, for a, a, a re-bore a re anyway. Um, but you know, if you're on a budget and you're just trying to do a re-ring, uh, it's often really important to check the bore ring gap in a few different spots and it's kind of an old school method of checking for bore taper where if you check it at the top and you can go down and if if you have six thou or three thou ring taper if you have three thou change in ring gap then you know you have about a a thou taper bore if you have six thou and you can kind of multiply it by that so um just remember for every three thou in ring gap change, that's a, a 1,000 change in the, the board. So there you go, guys. I hope that answered some of your questions about piston ring gap. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, comment below, and I'll try to get a uh, response to you guys. Um, so we're working away here. That's your U YouTube block. That's your guys' engine that we're building and decisions you guys make. There's the, the black um, two-piece block and then the mystery block here. We're going to talk about this in the next video when we uh, decide on what heads we're gonna use. Uh, I shouldn't say the next video, but next week's video, when we decide what heads we're gonna use. So you guys get to pick next week on what heads you wanna use on the YouTube 355. Um, this engine right here, for you Vortec guys, uh, you're gonna like that one. So uh, we'll talk about that next week. So I'm gonna start getting this stuff together and uh, we can make some decisions next week on what we want to use. So uh, please like and subscribe. I'm almost at 7,000 uh, subscribers and that's awesome guys and I really appreciate the support. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thanks guys.